Today, I'll be showing you how to get VS Code, Platform.io, and GitHub working together. You can use any Arduino compatible microcontroller, but I'll be using both an Arduino Uno and an ESP32 to show you how easy it is to jump between them. If you've played with Arduinos before, you're probably familiar with the Arduino IDE. If I'm being completely honest, it's basically a glorified text editor with a compile button. The syntax highlighting is faked and often doesn't function properly. Uh, errors aren't shown until you compile, there are no tooltips, the included tools are fairly basic, I could go on. It's time to find something a little more grown up. This is where VS Code comes in. So don't worry, I'm not going to try to make it complicated, but first I'd like to show you this small program I made. Uh, it's basically the blink sketch, but it blinks five times a second, and every time it does, it prints a point on a sine wave. The serial monitor gives us what we'd expect, as well as uh, some settings to change the data rate. The Arduino IDE also provides a graph version of the serial monitor, the serial plotter. Now let's take a look at Visual Studio Code. If you haven't already, uh, download and install the latest stable build. VS Code is positioned somewhere between a text editor and a fully fledged IDE. In fact, it's somewhat like a foundation where you turn it into the perfect IDE for you through extensions. Nearly anything can be programmed through VS Code uh, and there'll be a link in the description for an in-depth tutorial for VS Code. It's really thorough, so it's pretty long, but it's definitely super useful, especially if you plan on pursuing CS or software engineering or something. Anyways, we're looking for an extension called Platform.io. Platform.io clumps together frameworks, such as Arduino and some other ones, uh, libraries and board information and stuff like that, which makes developing for microcontrollers a lot easier. I already have mine installed, but I also recommend some other plugins or extensions, such as Better Comments and LiveShare. LiveShare lets multiple people edit the same document, sort of like a Google Doc. This is the Platform.io homepage. If you don't see it or you closed it, just open it from the menu on the left and click Open. Let's create a new project called Demo1. And we're going to select the Arduino Uno. It may take a minute, especially for the first time. With the project open, you can already tell this looks a lot different from a standard Arduino IDE setup. The first thing you might notice is that projects are not stored in the Arduino sketches folder. By default, they're in your documents folder. The next thing you might notice is the platform io.ini. In the Arduino IDE, most of the settings are in the Arduino IDE menu bar. However, platform io does things a little bit different and puts their settings in the project folder. So every project gets its own settings. These can include things like the baud rate, com port, and other stuff. It's a little annoying, but it's definitely worth it compared to using Ar the Arduino IDE. Usually a quick Google search like change baud rate platform IO will give you a quick answer for whatever you're looking for. For example, the way to change a baud rate is to do this. So that would change the baud rate to 115200. Normally in the Arduino IDE, you have to open the serial monitor and select it down here. Most of these settings can easily just be Googled, so don't stress too much about them. It's definitely new, but it has a lot of benefits. The next thing you might notice is several folders. Don't worry about .gitignore, it's a git thing and it can be useful, but plenty of other videos online explain it. Uh, you don't really have to worry about any folders other than lib and source. Lib just contains any private libraries you want to include. Uh, most of the time, you can just use Platform.io's library search tool, so you don't really need to worry about that. The source folder, on the other hand, it's where you just kind of dump all your code. Uh, one final thing you might notice is that we're using .cpp files instead of the Arduino.ino files. It makes no difference, they're just text files. So let's get a program going. I'm going to paste in the same program from earlier. The compile and compile and upload buttons are just like the Arduino IDE, but at the very bottom left of the screen. Let's build and upload the program.
Okay, so now we need to see what the board is sending us. The little plug button is the serial monitor. Be aware that you can only have one serial monitor open at once. If I leave the serial monitor from the Arduino IDE open, I can't open the VS Code one, uh, and vice versa. It looks like we're getting the expected output. One downfall, though, is that VS Code doesn't have a serial plotter. Uh, however, we can still use the one from the Arduino IDE. Again, only if other serial monitors are closed. For example, it says port busy. In order to use it, we have to first close down this serial monitor with a trash can, and then go into it and try again. And it appears to be working just as normal. You may be thinking that it looks like there's some downsides to using VS Code, and you're right but the benefits definitely outweigh the minor problems. For example, VS Code allows for real syntax highlighting and autocomplete, kind of like this. It may not seem like much, but this is actually really nice to have when coming from the Arduino IDE where you have to type in everything manually. Not to mention the other plethora of tools that VS Code comes with both built in and as extensions. Other benefits include error checking as you type, Git integration, being able to customize the entire program, and user snippets, which is covered in the video that I talked about earlier. Plus, overall, I've found VS Code to be less finicky than the Arduino IDE. That's really about it for moving over to VS Code. It's really not too bad. Uh, let's talk about using the ESP32 instead of the Uno. First, I'm going to unplug the Uno and plug in the ESP32. And we're done with uh, demo one. Getting the ESP32 to work with the Arduino IDE is kind of a lot of work. Uh, you have to make sure certain board definitions are downloaded and you have to select the right board every time you change projects. Uh, let's see how we can do it in VS Code by starting a new project. Uh, we'll call it demo2. For the board, I'm going to select ESP32 dev module. And we're still going to use the Arduino framework. And I'm just going to paste in the same old program. Now I should be good to upload. One thing I should mention is the ESP32 sometimes has a button labeled boot, and in a second, you may have to hold down the button in order to upload the program. That's the only difference from the uh, Arduino. And this is where I'd hold the button for a second or two. If I don't, it cancels, but it's loading the program now. Great, so let's take a look at the serial monitor. Just like that, the ESP32 is working identically to the UNO. It's that easy with Platform IO. Also, you can swap between projects with different boards and not have to manually switch since the information is tied to the project rather than the editor. That's about it for jumping to ESP32. It's really simple. Finally, let's figure out Git with Platform IO. First, you should sign into GitHub through VS Code. I know that you need to down here, but you may have to again in a different spot. Also, I highly recommend you watch some GitHub tutorials. I linked one down below in the description, which is also thorough and long, but again, it's a great tutorial. Uh, it does focus on more of the command line interface, so be warned, but the button presses are doing the exact same thing. Also, the word master has been replaced with the word main recently. They're exactly the same thing. When creating a repository for this kind of stuff, I actually find it easiest to go onto the GitHub website. Let's create a new repository, and I'm going to call it demo3. And I'm going to initialize it with a readme. Great, so now we're going to want to copy the link. And head back into VS Code. Under Platform IO, scroll down, and click Clone Git Project. Drop the link in here. 
navigate to your platform IO projects and select that as a repository location. And it'll clone. Uh, we're going to add it to the workspace. Just like that, we now have a local copy of the repo. Of course, there's nothing more than a readme, so we should put some stuff in it. If this was someone else's pre-existing platform IO project, there would already be files, and we wouldn't have to create our own. But ours is blank, so we'll create a new platform IO project of the same name so that all the files end up in the local repository. I'm going to use the same program from earlier. One thing I'd like to point out is that the files and folders on the left now have a new color and the files have a letter next to them. Uh, in this case, U stands for untracked, meaning that the file is new and hasn't been added to the repository yet. Uh, the folders have a little dot just to say that there may be files in them that have changed. Uh, I'll have a full cheat sheet down in the description of what each letter means. Um, and again, you should also watch that tutorial I mentioned. Because our files are currently untracked, the first step is to add them to what's called the staging area. The staging area is just kind of like a rough draft space, and Git can track us making changes and know when something's updated. And I just saved, so we just got an M saying they're modified. Now that everything's staged, we can commit, and we're just going to call this the initial commit. A commit is basically like putting everything together and getting it ready for upload. We can still go back and make changes, but we'll have to repackage everything in a commit. I think I'm about ready to upload, so what we'll do is we'll push. That's basically uploading. Now if we look on GitHub, everything's been uploaded. Alright, let's decide to make some changes. What if we slowed everything down and saved it? There's now been a modified file. Let's stage the change and let's commit to it. We'll call it slowed down. Now we haven't pushed yet, so even though we committed, we can still make changes and then recommit. So let's slow it down even more. Let's stage a change and commit. And now I think we're ready to push. Let's check GitHub. The most recent commit was 17 seconds ago. That sounds about right. We had the initial commit when we created it, then the initial commit when we uploaded everything that we really wanted. We slowed it down, and then we slowed it down more. Looks like it's all here. We just contributed to a project, and that's about it. There are a few other things, such as pull requests if someone else owns the main branch and you want to contribute. If you found this confusing, try watching some other videos on how to clone, fork, commit, and push. I'm sure other people can explain it a lot better than me, but hopefully this made sense as a clean way to be able to have multiple people editing a platform IO project. Thanks.